When our Messiah said, I never knew you, what exactly did he mean? And further, when he says, depart from me, you who work lawlessness or iniquity, what did that mean? Let's take a look at that together. I hear the forest crying, kingdom come. Shalom, my friends. Sean asked me to do an audio study on uh, the word that we see as lawlessness in the Hallelujah Scriptures. Other English versions will say iniquity, specifically in the book of Matith Yahu. That's Matthew, chapter 7, verse 23, where Yeshua says, Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Let's begin reading the verse before that, chapter 7, verse 22, in Matthew, where Yeshua says, Many shall say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, Master, have we not Navu prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? Verse 23, And then I shall declare to them, Yeshua says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Now, first of all, in verse 22, we see that we're talking about those who prophesy in his name, those who have cast out demons in his name. And those who have done many mighty works in the name of Yahshua. We can apply that today, my friends. Those out there who claim to be believers in the Messiah, so much so that they prophesy in his name, they cast out demons in his name, they do mighty works. In his name. Does that mean that they love him? Does that mean that he knows them? You know, I think many of us are a little too easily swayed to believe when someone says, you know, I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus or in the name of Yeshua, or in the name of Yahweh, or Yahuwah, or, Abba forbid, in the name of Jehovah, you know, people readily think, oh, well, you know, he's, he's using his name. He must be a believer. This must be true. No, look at what's going on here. Yeshua himself is talking to, saying that there will be many in that day when they face judgment, many who look at him and call him Master, Adonai, Adonai, haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we cast out demons in your name? Haven't we done many mighty works in your name? And how does he respond? He looks at them and he says, I never knew you. Go away from me, you who work lawlessness. So, number one, let's be a little more diligent about exercising discernment. Just because someone says they believe in him, it doesn't mean that they really do. Just because someone says that they're prophesying in his name or they had dreams and he told them this, that, and the other thing, that doesn't mean... They are to be believed always. Here is how you know. If it isn't written in this book, it's a lie. 
literally, if it's not declared literally by him in his word, walk away. Don't pay any attention to it. Now, let's take a look where Yeshua says, I never knew you. What does that mean? He never met them? He never knew their name? No, he's saying something much deeper than that. Let's take a look at this slide. Here we have the Aramaic Hebrew word for the English word knew. I never knew you. And the word here is yada. This is the same word where we see in the book of Bereshit, Genesis, where it says that Adam knew Eve. That's to be found in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. It says, And Adam knew Chawa, that's the true name for Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain. This is talking about serious intimacy. And here, you know, we have the Aramaic Hebrew word yada. In the Greek, if you want to look at the Greek for Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, where uh, Yeshua says, I never knew you, the English word there for knew in the Greek is genosko. And that is basically, it's the same word as yada. It's talking about knowing someone very intimately. It's referring to intercourse. As obviously yada is doing because it says, you know, Adam yada chawa and she conceived. Here we have three odiot. Yod. Dalit Ain Ya Da. And Yod is talking about your actions or someone's actions. It, uh, Yod points at worship and intimacy. Dalit, that is the door. And more specifically, it's talking about movement in and out of this door. And Dalit also refers to the four dimensions of space and time. So it's moving in and out of that door between this world and the spiritual realm, you might say. Hopefully between this world and Elo, the kingdom, the Malchut of Elohim. On the dark side, of course, it would be movement between this world and the world of darkness, of Hashatan. Then we have Ayin, picture of an eye. And Ayin talks about spiritual sight, but it also talks about knowing someone or something in your soul, in your living experience, really knowing. So, yada, Yeshua says, I never knew you. Yod, I, I never saw you worship me. In your actions, you were never intimate with me. Dalit, Yeshua is the door, and he's saying, I never saw you moving in and out of my door. Ayin, you don't have spiritual sight, he's saying. You don't know me in your soul. You don't know me through your living experience. Now, moving on, after he says, I never knew you. You were never intimate with me. You never worshipped me. You know, people, oh, they can have dreams, they can prophesy, they can heal the sick, they can cast out demons. You know, Hashatan, Satan, he, he gets involved in these things too. He can cause someone 
the demons to leave them. He can cause someone to uh, their sickness to go away. He can uh, whisper prophecies in someone's ear, and, and you know he presents himself as an angel of light. He can make them think that they're hearing from Elohim, and yet they're hearing from Hashatan, Satan. He can do all those things. And these people who say they've done all these things, and then Yeshua says, look, I never knew you, they were not operating through a spiritual relationship with Elohim. They were operating in the flesh. They were, you know, the devil is lying to them. They're believing it. I'm a prophet, you know, that's in the flesh, pride. Look at me. You know, that's another key when, when you're trying to discern if someone is of Elohim or not. Number one, like I said, if they are saying anything that is not being said literally in this book, they're liars. And the other key is, you look at them and their ministry. Who are they pointing at? Are they pointing at themselves? Or are they, are they steering you towards them? Talking about, oh, I am a prophet. I had dreams. I was correct. This happened. I, sa- I said it would. Uh, or are they pointing at Elohim? Elohim says this. That's the key. If they're pointing at themselves, then they don't know him. They are looking, they're in the flesh. They're not in the spirit. And Yahweh says, I am spirit. I'm looking for those who worship me in spirit, not in flesh. So, moving on. After Yeshua says, I never knew you, he says, go away from me. Depart from me. You who work lawlessness, the Hallelujah Scriptures says. Others' versions say iniquity, unrighteousness. Here, for this word, here's the slide for that. I went to the Aramaic, and the word is eolea, and that is spelled ayin, wa, and tagged on the end of the word, Always, these two together, the way they are, always appear at the end of the word. It's Lamed and Aleph. So, it's pronounced Iolea. And this is the word for lawlessness. It's often translated as unrighteousness, iniquity, unjust. Sometimes it's interpreted as babes or children. In the English, (laughs) you know, if you've been watching my videos, if you've been with me for a while, you know, this is why I do the audio, because the English just takes us away from the Father's original intentions. The English or any other language adds to and takes away from the Father's word. Even modern Aramaic Hebrew will also add to and take away from the Father's Word. That's why, that's why I focus so much on the audio, because it is ancient. It takes us back to the pictographic form of communication. You cannot distort. For example, here we have Ayin's picture of an eye. You can't philosophize about this. You can't distort it. It's a picture of an eye. It has to do with spiritual sight. The next word is, uh, the next oat is wa. It's a picture of a tent peg. It has to do with securing the tent that hopefully you are pitching with Elohim. Securing the tent that hopefully Elohim is pitching with you. You can't get funny about that. It's a tent peg. Then we have Lamed. Aleph, Lamed is a picture of the shepherd's staff. Has to do with guiding, steering, and teaching the sheep. Aleph is a picture of an ox head. It has to do with being yoked to the Father. It has to do with being taught by the Father. So, 
we look at this word where Yeshua says, You who work, Iolea, you who work lawlessness, you who, Ayin, have no spiritual sight, who do not worship me in spirit. Wa, you who are not pitching a t- your tent with Elohim. You're not pitching a tent with Elohim. Elohim is not pitching a tent with you. Lamed, the shepherd's staff. You who are not being taught by me. You're not following my tarot, my Torah, my teachings. You're not following my word, the instructions of my word. You're going your own way, not my way. And Aleph, picture of the ox head. You are not making the Father your headship. Your thoughts are not on him. Your thoughts are bent on yourself. You're not receiving Elohim's teachings. This is what he's saying. Go away from me. I never knew you. You who have no worship of Elohim. You who are not pitching a tent with Elohim. Elohim's not pitching a tent with you. You're not being taught by Elohim. You're not following the Father. You're not receiving Elohim's teachings. You're not making Elohim your headship. That's why he never knew those. And that's why he says, go away from me. That's our study for this week in the audio, my friends. I hope and I pray this video has been a beracha to you and yours. Until next time, Shalom. Let your kingdom come. Oh, oh, oh. It's an ancient story that still gets told to those who hear and those who don't by prophets and trees and things out of the blue but once that cry has reached your ears your heart gets filled by what you hear and what you hear is just the sound